So, how would anarchism actually work? That's the first question most people have about anarchism. It was certainly my first question. Without government, wouldn't society just descend into chaos? How would anything get done? How would resources be distributed? And how would we make sure that people stay safe? Ah, oh, shit. Here we go again. Hello, everyone. So you know the controlled political media on YouTube, people like Bad Mouse Production, Secular Talk, Peter Coffin, and Thought Slime, who are pushed up in the search results by YouTube's algorithms in an attempt to further radicalize the hashtag resist crowd? Something I may add that they're pretty unsuccessful at so far, mostly just giving people like myself some juicy low-hanging fruit. Hello, I'm Slimeface, a non-binary. Maybe you didn't know that about me. And it's not that people didn't support me. People supported the ever-loving crap out of me. And it pissed me off. I spill my guts to you people. I make myself vulnerable, and what do I get in return? You're valid. Oh, am I? I'm so glad you approve. Here I was, thinking that my emotions were enough, but I'm so glad to hear that I meet your standards. Yeah, I can only imagine why, despite YouTube literally going out of their way to pull strings to help these people gain popularity, they're barely able to pull in 10,000 subscribers. Well, anyway, the worst of these channels hands down is one known as Non-Compete. I could try and describe how fucking awful he is, but the first sentence in the description of his channel trailer sums it up perfectly. Anarcho-communism and puppets. He's one of those intersectional Marxist content creators who creates puppet videos, or just general PG material in a similar vein to queer kid stuff. Now this would be unnerving on its own, but here's the deal. Children ages 3 to 5 are not going to unironically watch political puppet shows of their own volition, but this is very clearly the target audience, and you can see with the comments, the average viewers of non-competes videos are not young children. They are people who share his beliefs. So the only people who are actually going to be watching on YouTube are people who have similar ideas to him. So Filthy Heretic was the first one to point this out publicly, but we'd been having a few conversations about this before then on Discord. These videos are not designed to have children find them on YouTube, but rather for soy-dripping Asperger's to submit these to schools and show them to children who fit the age range target because they can't win any ideological battles online, so naturally they have to force their opinions down the throat of people who haven't yet developed the ability to critically think and evaluate the information presented to them. Very progressive. I mean, nothing says we're confident in our totally valid ideas, like a large amount of content creators who advocate for the ideas in question, having their videos bumped up in the algorithms by YouTube, and still can't even garner 10,000 subscribers, and for many of them to create content deliberately designed and created with the intention to indoctrinate young children. And as you may be able to imagine, non-competes content is just as retarded as it is creepy, to the point where I'm not entirely convinced that this isn't just someone from 4chan doing some deep level trolling. His channel's slogan is, Rejecting Capitalism for Fun and Profit, which sounds like something that you'd find on The Onion. And if you were to go to the blog linked on his YouTube page, you can see that on the front page, there is a quote from Peter Kropotkin featured. Now, I actually do have plans at some point to make a full video explaining why Peter Kropotkin's politics in general were fucking stupid, and how he was a pseudoscientist whose claims were on a level of absurdity comparable to the likes of Mary Baker Eddy. But for now, I'll let this quote from the self-proclaimed anarchist who claimed to be a biologist speak for itself. Don't compete. Competition is always injurious to the species, and you have plenty of resources to avoid it. A biologist and anarchist who claims that competition is harmful for society and the human species. Well, anyway, Non-Compete has a series explaining how anarchism works, and that's what we'll be responding to today. Now, before I explain how I personally think anarchist society might function, let me first admit that nobody really knows for sure how anarchism would work out in the real world. At this point, it's all pretty theoretical, since there's just never been a large-scale and sustained anarchist society during peacetime. 
Catalonia was not an anarchist society. People were forced into a military draft. People were forced into labor at gunpoint. People were murdered in mass for holding religious or political beliefs the worker union didn't like. People were killed for trying to leave Catalonia without the permission of the CNT Worker Council. People were killed if they attempted to compete with the CNT and were killed if they were caught in possession of certain commodities that the CNT didn't approve of, two examples being coffee or tobacco. Not only this, but the structural organization of Catalonia was based on a monopoly on arbitration operated through democracy. A literal political rule. Now, I went into greater detail about this in my response to libertarian socialist rants, talking about Catalonia in one of his videos, so I'll link that video along with my citation in the description. As for your other claim, we do have long-term and sustained examples of stateless societies which have existed throughout history. Norse Ireland, Cospaya, Neutral Moorsnet, and Pennsylvania for the entirety of the 17th century. But even before then, there were intercontinental trade routes, which are documented to be 94,000 years old, which itself implies the existence of organization on a large scale, arbitration, and yes, the ability to demonstrate self-ownership all without a centralized monopoly on arbitration, otherwise known as a government, because governments didn't form until 3500 BC. Now that does not mean that anarchism is just a silly fantastic pipe dream just because it's never been implemented. When the United States was founded, it was considered a great experiment by the framers of its constitution, and it took over a century and a catastrophic civil war before it settled into anything resembling a stable regime. Anarchism would require similar experimentation. Even among anarchists, there's a wide range of opinion about how best to organize society and design democracy. Anarchism is incompatible with democracy, as democratic mandates have no natural explanatory power for why they're justified, and therefore not only need coercion, but also a political ruling class, since a monopoly on arbitration must exist in order to ensure that these mandates are enforced. So, all that being said, what I'm going to present in this video is my personal take on how an anarchist society might work in practice. I hope that this will inspire other anarchist writers and YouTubers to share their ideas for how stateless socialist societies might take shape. Heh, <laughs> good luck with that one. May as well ask him to explain why a dog can also be a cat while you're at it. Hopefully because I said that, no one will ever think that 2% of my lineage is kitty. Otherwise, I won't be able to fit into the Arctic Fox ethno-commune that forms after the state is gone. The most fundamental idea of anarchism in my mind is that of consent. Anarchists believe that all human interactions must be consensual in nature. The opposite of consent, of course, is coercion. Huh. Okay, so far so good. Anarchists seek to dissolve the state and capitalism because these social systems are held together through coercive forces. Oh, fucking hell. Capitalist republics like the United States of America may carry all the trappings of freedom and liberty. The United States is not a free market. Even in the Marxist use of the term capitalism, the US government subsidizes corporations such as Facebook or Walmart nearly if not more than they actually profit and regulate the market on behalf of these big corporations in order to kill competitors by making the cost of production so much more expensive and therefore requiring more capital to invest in order to even enter the market as a producer and more profit to sustain themselves. Also, stop blatantly taking examples of things the state does and blame it on the fucking market. How many times, Marxists, do you need to be called out on this before you'll stop? It's not an effective propaganda tactic, it's just really fucking annoying. But beneath the veneer of democracy is a political structure that's fundamentally coercive in nature. And when you want to take over used military equipment, they were saying you couldn't do it. You know what I said. That was my first day. You can do it. As a citizen of the United States, I am forced to pay taxes that go to unjust wars and violent political actions. I was forced to register for the selective service, which means that the state can force me into the military service at any time. 
So you're not a collectivist then, because this is exactly the moment where collectivist anarchism begins to fall in on itself and expose itself as the nonsensical contradiction that it truly is. Your society operates voluntarily without coercion. Okay, sweet, sounds good. Your society also operates where all association and all property is managed and controlled by a worker council. So what if one individual, say myself, refuses to go along? along with the laws that the worker council is enforcing. Say I create cigarettes and want to sell them to people willing to buy them, since cigarettes were outlawed in Catalonia, I'd say this is a fair comparison. If I'm allowed to continue doing what I'm doing and my right to free association is respected, not only is this society not collectivist, since the rights of the individual necessarily negate any rights a group may claim to be entitled to, and the individual submits to no authority but their own, this would also mean that a worker council in any form wouldn't be able to exist. But, if the worker council does use force to stop me from trading and stop people from trading with me, then, since there is now a coercive monopoly on arbitration which imposes its whim onto people through violence, that would make this an authoritarian society as it's being tyrannized by a ruling class. Then there's the complete lack of democracy in the workplace. The profits that are produced by workers are siphoned up and seized by wealthy capitalists, and workers can be laid off or have their salaries and benefits cut at any time for virtually any reason. Profit does not come from labor. Profit is the production cycle's revenue minus the expense put in by the producer. Also, not only are you not entitled to any service, but attempting to force producers to provide more benefits and in turn increasing the startup costs of production would lower the amount of jobs available, which if you had a more competitive market, you'd have more pay and benefits anyway, since companies are incentivized by competition to provide better quality jobs to get more labor to work for them. Jeez, it's like I'm talking to a fucking toddler. Alright, well does this video contain any more hot takes before I move on to part two of this series? An anarchist society would seek consent and consensus of every member of society as the top priority for any system of government that we might put into practice. His idea of anarchy would have a government. I'm not even going to try and wrap my head around this level of doublethink. Thanks for playing, kiddo. Now I would go on, but the rest of the video is pretty much nothing but this. For all the lip service capitalists like to give to individual liberty and social mobility, the system they advocate is, in reality, based on rigid hierarchy. State hierarchies ensure that a privileged class of lawmakers, lobbyists, lawyers, law enforcement agents, military officials, and state executives have power over the rest of us. But there is one last point he attempts to make, which isn't just him taking things the state have done and blaming it on the market. Anarchist societies would seek to eliminate all hierarchies unless they're proven to be absolutely justified and necessary. An example of a hierarchy that's perhaps justified and necessary might be the crew of a ship. Sailing is a complicated and dangerous endeavor after all, and out in the high seas it probably does make sense for the less experienced sailors to follow the directions of their more experienced shipmates for the purposes of safety and pragmatism. An example of a hierarchy that is unjust and unnecessary would be the way most coffee shops are run. At a cafe there's no imminent danger. Nothing that happens at Starbucks is so pressing that the workers couldn't organize and run the business themselves through democratic processes. Even in situations where hierarchies are perhaps justified, anarchists would seek to flatten hierarchies and make things as democratic as pragmatically possible. First of all, you've contradicted your previous definition of anarchism being a strictly voluntary society. If people chose to voluntarily organize in hierarchical structures, examples being a family, a sports team, or in the example you provided, the crew of a ship, they're justified in doing so. Why? Because they're not coercing anyone, so the self-ownership of the individual is respected and the individual is submitting to no authority. Anarchy itself has nothing to do with hierarchy, only the rejection of a coercive political authority, such as a democratic worker council. Secondly, this is the logical fallacy of begging the question. The coffee shop owner does not have to justify hiring people to work for them because the laborers are hired voluntarily. This is not an act position but a passive one. Since you are the one who seeks to use force to seize the property, you are the active party and therefore the burden of proof is on you to justify your actions. 
So anyway, that's all for today's video. If you liked it, please comment, rate, and subscribe, and I will see you all next time.